sir. Oh, Hello. give over. Oh, thank you for your support, sir. I shall always wear it. And stop being cheerful. You know it depresses me. I've never been any good in a morning. Not all that hot at night, either. <laughs> you ought to see me at ten to two on a Friday. But more to the point, what time is it now? It's I'm going to be late for work time. That was not the question. Yucky Tony Blackburn says it's five to nine. I'm going to be late for work. <laughs> You're nearly through, Gavin. Only if I'm late again this week, I'll get a dozen lashes. Or if I'm really lucky, two dozen. Sorry, old chap. Should have said. Blood and sand. What's that smell? Prince of Tuscany. And how long's he been here, then? Should have just barged in, Chris. Englishman's bathroom is his castle, as they say. I couldn't get in. The portcullis was locked. No, I really mean it. Don't let me get in the way. You go right ahead. I was, uh, <laughs> I was thinking of having a shave, actually. <laughs> All yours, mate. Just, oh, hang on. You'll pull through. <clears throat> what do you think, eh? Brown suit, wide lapels, broad pinstripes. Well, it's all right for pinstripes, but I'm not really sure about wide lapels. Wouldn't want to get people whispering behind your back, you know. Fancy wearing Prince of Tuscany aftershave with wide lapels. Because <laughs> chicks are turned on by masculine perfumes more than fellas. So you walk down Piccadilly ponging like that, it'll work out about even Stephen. <laughs> oh, well. It's all yours, mate. Be my guest. Be my guest? It's my house. Sorry, took yours. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, blood and cold water. <laughs> Dear David, think of the happiness that you could bring to millions of music lovers if you linked arms with all the other DJs and jumped off Blackpool Tower. <laughs> Hi, Fliss. Hey, you're looking great this morning. Woof, woof, woof. Oh, do you mean? Well, you know, it's great. Well, I haven't done my hair and I haven't done my eyes, and this dressing gown is more surplus. From the Norman Conquest. <laughs> oh, some chicks look knock out in anything. Look even better in nothing. <laughs> What's this thing? Ooh. We can't go on meeting like this, my darling. You with those wonderful bits of toast round your mouth. The aftershave. Five quid a bottle, it ought to turn nuns into nymphos. Oh. <laughs> hey, are you meeting Carol? Carol? Carol! Your wife, that Carol. Ex-wife. Now, you mustn't think that just because she's walked out and left you, Gavin, that she's walked out and left you. Pardon? <laughs> Sorry, you'd have to be a woman to understand that. Well, it's not exactly logical, is it? Ah, well, if human beings were logical, Gavin, marriage would come under the heading of nutty inventions. Oh. <laughs> you know, deep down, there's nothing you'd like better than to make it up with Carol, is there? Well, I suppose if you put it like that, there's a lot of things I'd like better. Faint heart, never won fair lady. You don't win chicks like Carol, they get knocked down to the highest bidder. Oh dear, you are upset, aren't you? Trying to put a brave face on things. I dreamt about her last night. I was very little and she caught me in a big butterfly net. <laughs> Stuck me in a glass case with eight Spanish waiters and a tadpole. <laughs> that must mean something, mustn't it? Well, speaking as someone who once bought a peg off a gypsy, that means that Carol wants you back desperately. Urgently. She stuck a pin through me. <laughs> well, that means she wants to have him to hold you. She make much having me skewered on a pin next to eight Spanish waiters. Symbolic. What of? Of love reborn. Don't quite see that, Fliss. Look, tadpole. Now, everybody knows that tadpoles are symbolic. I mean, tadpoles turn into beautiful things like frogs. I think I'll go to work. 
It's all right, Fliss. I know you're just trying to be kind. Oh, no, no, I'm not trying to be kind, Gavin. Honestly, I'm not. Ah, you're really smashing. Not many people have put up with me like you and Chris. Ah. Wouldn't say I looked all that much like Robert Redford. <laughs> Fantastic, you know, the number of people who say I look like Robert Redford. You don't look a bit like him. Oh, no, I agree. I'll just uh, get bored, you know, dozens and dozens of people day after day saying I look like Robert Redford. <laughs> anyway, that's for me. Oh, wait. See you, Noel. You'll be late for work. <laughs> He's got to go. I can't stand it. Right. Right. One of you had better tell him. Well, he's your friend. But it'd sound better coming from somebody who wasn't his friend. You're a coward. I've never denied it. When I was a baby, I stood rigid with fear for two years in a baby bouncer. <laughs> I don't know. Who have you got with you? Morning. Now, oh, you're early, Mrs. Wagster. Did you get the all-night bus? <laughs> One day you're going to cut yourself with that tongue of yours. Isn't there any toast? Oh, he's got to go. I take it we're on the subject of Gavin Ramsay. Your non-paying guest. Oh, now, come on. It's not as easy as that, is it? I mean, for a start, we're all he's got, aren't we? And anyway, he'd cry. Well, I've been thinking. My bedroom needs decorating. Well, I'd need somewhere to stay. And where better than with my own daughter? Well, that way you'd have to send Gavin Ramsay packing, wouldn't you? Well... It's a bit like catching pneumonia to cure a cold, isn't it? In all my 52, 49 years, it's the first time I've been compared with pneumonia. Oh, well, Chris didn't mean it like that, Mum. Did you? I think I did. <laughs> well, late again. All I can say is you'll probably be late for your own funeral. It's the early bird that catches a worm, Christopher. It's had me toast. It may as well have me worm. <laughs> well, what we could do, Mr Brindley... Is put your packet on the 1930 flight from Manchester to Dusseldorf, then on a Lufthansa plane from Madrid, which should give us plenty of time to get it on the 020 flight out of Barcelona. Coffee. Gracias. No, it's only instant. <laughs> I know it sounds complicated, Mr. Brindley, but it's the only way we we'll get your packet to Cardiff by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Oh, very good, Mr. Brindley. He reckons parcels from Spain stay mainly on the plane. <laughs> Two big ones. <laughs> Stop thinking what you're thinking. I was only thinking how dark it had gone. It's like an eclipse when you lean over. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Brindley? Bangkok? What have we got to Bangkok? I don't know. What do you usually use? <laughs> Might have to buzz you back on this one, Mr. Brindley. Uh, yeah. Will do. Bye. It's a good job I'm not a married man whose wife's just walked out on him. Or I might find myself asking you for a date. Sauce pot. Mm, pure magic. You look fabulous in the lotus. Tonight's all right. It's a rape date. <laughs> Watch it, the press. Scoop hall for. <laughs> Hi, Chris. What gives? That's Sherry. Hello. She's a temp. I was just thinking that. <laughs> I'm taking her out tonight. It's only a week since Carl left you. And in all that time, mate, I've not looked at another chick. I mean, the heartache's got to end sometime. Yeah, I suppose so. And you've got your own pad, haven't you? Oh, I couldn't take her back there, cramped style. Anyway, what can we do for you? I've uh, just been to this CID briefing. They always call us in when they can't catch somebody. I, uh, thought I'd better tip you off. I'm clean. There's, um, there's a furniture van mob operating around your place. Yeah? When they find a house with nobody in, they shift the lot free of charge. Oh, mm. my stuff's all insured anyway. I prefer the money. You'd never get what it's worth. What do you think the second-hand value is of a wrought iron sombrero and a plastic bull's head with mother of pearl stuffed up its nostrils? <laughs> it's not a seller's market, Chris. Somebody somewhere is probably desperate for a wrought iron sombrero. Only someone with a wrought iron head. <laughs> You'll have to be more direct than phantom furniture van mobs. Well, I thought it was a subtle ploy. Subtle? It's about as clear as a pint of your home-brewed beer. <laughs> Why are you setting the table for three? 
He's coming home for lunch. I've lost my appetite. Don't worry, I haven't got much to eat. I'm hungry. The housekeeping doesn't stretch to five. Come to think of it, it doesn't quite stretch to one. I know money's made round to go round, but not. it doesn't go round enough. Yeah, that's pretty mind-blowing, kid. Hey, how about me asking Gavin for some money? For his keep? Look, if he starts paying for his keep, we'll never get rid of him. For once you pay the Dane Geld, you'll never be rid of the Dane. Yes, all right. I wonder what the Mafia charged for putting out a contract on something. <laughs> Just tell him, Chris. Come right out with it. Mm. Would you mind grunting that again? I didn't quite catch it. I wish I was a member of a very exclusive club that met on the third Wednesday of every month. Because if I didn't hurry up, I'd be late for today's meeting. That's him. Come on, you better be standing up. It's hard to be serious in a deck chair. Hello, my two favourite people. Hello, Gavin. Just talking about you. Oh, I do that a lot. Chris was saying he wanted a word with you the moment you came in. Thanks. Hey, I've been thinking over what you said about the furniture van mob. You've made a very wise decision, mate. I'll help you pack after lunch. Oh, I can't go back there. I might get thumped. Look, Gavin. Speaking as one coward to another. Yeah. The fact is, well, facts have to be faced, haven't they? Yeah. That's why I brought the collar telly round. Welcome to the raw time sombrero, but not the collar telly. Look, Gavin, you've been here a week now, and you mustn't think. Collar. Mm. <laughs> you mean like in collar? There's been some fantastic development since you got your set, Chris. There's even a brand new channel called ITV. <laughs> anyway, I thought if you didn't mind, I'd bring it round. It's outside in the Lotus. You might get nicked out there. Yeah, I'll bring it in. Whatever it is you say to him, he's just gone out like a greyhound with his tail on fire. Well, I didn't say much, really. Well, whatever it was, it must have worked. I'll go and see if he needs a hand with his packing. Uh, hang on a tick. Um, I couldn't break it to him directly, so what I've done is I've, um, I've got stage one underway. <laughs> what stage one? He's bringing round his colour telly. <laughs> softly, softly, catchy monkey. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. When is Gavin going to go? We are not going to sniff at a colour set, are we, Fliss? He's supposed to look at them. Ooh, that is pathetic. <laughs> Anyway, it's the middle of the week. The best time for him to go is on a Friday, when there aren't any football highlights on. Like, like tonight. tonight. <laughs> Quite close the front door. You've not bumped it, have you? No. All Don Revy's lads. In colour. I'll close the front door. I'll take it up to my room, then. <laughs> Pardon? Well, if I've got it up there, I won't be living in your laps, will I? Yeah, but I thought... You went wrong. Everything all right? Hunky-dory. Stage one was a knockout. Which one have I got? Surely you can recognise your own children. You know I'm not good on faces. Oh, honestly. I've got... Simon. Well, Sarah, I hope you turn out to be a little cracker. Nobody would call you promising right now, would they? Personality is far more important than looks. In Africa, little crackers go for five cows each. Birds with bums like the beam end of a Dutch barge wouldn't go for a pig's trotter. It is not the same in England. It is exactly the same in England. Little crackers get the guys with flashy sports cars. And birds who look like the back end of a bus sit at the back end of a bus. Not again. I always thought they had to sleep in a coffin during the day and just come out at midnight. <laughs> I've just popped in to see if Gavin Ramsay's been given his marching orders. Not quite. We've just had stage one. What stage one when it's at home? A strategic manoeuvre. And at least it's one thing around here that's at home. <laughs> mm. <coughs> oh. Mm. And then babies, you feel you could eat them. Mm. <laughs> when they get bigger, you wish you had. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mrs. Rexer. Hey, you know, Fliss, every time I see your mum, I think to myself, no doubt where Fliss gets a good look from. Two peaches off the same tree. Well, 
Well, I wasn't without strings to my bow once upon a time. If you were 25 again, Mrs. Wagstaff, you wouldn't be safe with me around. Oh, you're still a married man. Until divorce to his part. Anyway, forbidden fruit tastes all the sweeter. Got a colleague with me from the office in the hall. Uh, we've got some paperwork to sort out. Invoices, that sort of... All right, if I use my bedroom. I suppose so. Well, aren't you going to introduce us, Gavin? Yeah. I mean, we're not going to eat him. Well, he's certainly conscientious about his work. <laughs> <clears throat> this is Sherry. Chris, you met this morning. Fliss's wife. And Mrs. Wagstaff, Fliss's mum. <laughs> well, I expect we'd uh, better get up there, get down to it. <laughs> Probably see you all later then. Bye. She's got a bit behind, see? She's got quite a bit in front as well. good time that was had by all. I reckon Gavin's discovered one of the secrets of the universe. How to make his bread fall jam side up. <laughs> well, I hope you're not just going to lounge around in a striped deck chair while he turns your spare bedroom into a den of iniquity. Well, she does work at his place. Perhaps they really are getting down to some paperwork. What in the name of nameless orgies is going on up there? It's not what's going on, it's what's coming off. <laughs> if your husband, Felicity, continues to turn a blind eye to this... Knocking off birds in the spare bedroom? Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> then I shall have to seriously consider curtailing my visits. Do you want to seriously consider curtailing your visits right away, Mrs. Wagstaff? There is a bus at ten minutes too. <laughs> don't think I don't know how many blue beans make five, Christopher Hawthorne. Pardon? You're welcome. It's an old saying. She just made it up. And what does it mean? It means that you don't know everything. Huh? Are you curtailing, Mrs. Wagstaff? Well, I think I've had my fill for one evening. Bumps on the ceiling speak louder than words. You must buy those twins another christening present tomorrow. Do you think they'd like a copy of the Karma Sutra? <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Wagstaff. Mind how you curtail now. Well, we've got old Gav to thank for that. It's the first time your mother's been and gone within 17 and a half hours. She's off like a bat out of hell. Well, she's got a lot of people to tell. She'd have them all tut tut tutting like little motorboats before the night's out. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't know who you are, Mr. Hey, that picture's worse than usual. Mm -hmm. Just trying to adjust in the fine tuning, will you? <laughs> That's not the fine tuning. <laughs> That's the contrast. <laughs> I think it's gone to that graveyard in the sky where all old TV sets go to die. We can't get BBC Two. Did you wind it up before you switched on? <laughs> You've not been long, have you? No, I cracked it. Uh, we cracked the paperwork fairly quickly. Yes, we heard you. Cracking the paperwork. Oh, it must have been when I dropped the stapler. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, fun time now. Off to the Bees Knees Disco to meet Sherry's friends. Hey, is that where they are, those topless go-go dancers? Yeah, Sherry's friends. Right, then, you fit. <laughs> Sauce pot. Pure magic. Well, be careful, Gabby. <laughs> Don't forget what Fay Ray did to King Kong. <laughs> Come on, then, little monkey. Yeah. What have you done? Yeah. Ah. Fliss. Chris. Kiss. Mm. Let's go to bed. It's not nine o'clock yet. I know. Mm. Oh, now, come on. That's not the only reason for going to bed early. Chris. Hang on. I want to see if the desert orc really is the son of a lowly born blacksmith. It's Gavin's bedroom. It's our house. It's Gavin's television set. It's our electricity. And it's Gavin's whiskey. True. Hey, aren't other people's beds sexy? 
Depends who's in them. You know what I mean. Hmm. I have been trying to cut down on insatiable lust. Mm-hmm. Once it's in your bloodstream, you've just got to keep topping it up. Mm. Do you mind if I have a quick ravish now? Mm. <laughs> oh. What are you doing? It's conjugal rights time. But I have them. When? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Once more with feeling, please. The camera got jammed. I'm terribly sorry, Gavin, but our TV set's packed up, so we thought that if as you, you wouldn't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's swap for the night. Hey, wait a what? minute. What? Oh, you must be the whiskey. Whoops. Or even the whiskey. Oh, well, see you in the morning and sleep tight. Hey. Hey, Gavin. You know, on second thoughts, you do look like Robert Redford. Fantastic, the number of people say that, you know. <laughs> okay, it's all fixed. <laughs> do -do -do. <laughs> Blood and sand. He's organised a party. Oh, it's no good, Chris. He's got to go. He's probably doing that right now in my deck chair. Hey, do you think my deck chair's full of topless go-go dancers? Perhaps I better go downstairs and see if they're all right. No. Well, I wouldn't like them to catch cold. Be all right. Anyway, once you've seen one topless go-go dancer, like me, you've seen them all. I've never seen you topless go-go dancing. Geronimo! 